What leads people to come to talk to me about liposuction? Well, obviously everybody's a little bit different, but as I think about it, there are certain patterns that people sort of fall into. One is um, the patient that, um, as they've aged, um, is just unhappy and unable to, unhappy with the way they look and unable to change it, to change it. They've dieted, they've exercised, they've failed. They've dieted, they've exercised, and they failed again. And after enough of that, uh, I think that they've started to turn toward alternatives. People coming in for consults for liposuction uh, generally have their problem areas that they focus on. Uh, and most patients are pretty savvy. They've had friends or family that have gone through this. They've been on the internet. They've uh, checked out our website where there's a ton of before and afters. Um, and so they have a real sense of what to expect and what's appropriate. What they don't have uh, is sort of the surgical eye for when tissues are appropriate for liposuction or, going, or are going to need more than that. We make our recommendations uh, and you get to choose really what we do. Um, after that, we need to set up a, a, a pre-op consultation. And there's a lot of things that happen at the pre-op consultation. First, it's your second time that you've been here or if you're one of our many returning patients, maybe the 30th. But uh, it's, it's the, at least the second time you've been here. Now, that's really helpful because the third time you come is for surgery. All of this stuff is done here at the center. And what's really good about that is it's starting to become home. It's, it's, it's not as strange. It's not unusual. You're not going to another place, a surgery center or a hospital you've never been to before. You're seeing the same people that you've seen before. And it lowers your blood pressure for your surgery. It just makes everything go a little bit more smoothly. Uh, all these little things matter. Um, at the pre-op, there's a whole bunch of things that have to get handled. We take your photos, we give you your prescriptions, we give you your garments for the surgery, we talk about the role of the support person, we end up handling the finances, and we ask, we, uh, we give you a list of medications to avoid prior to surgery, and uh, we ask if there are any last minute questions that you have and get them answered. Now comes to be the surgery day, big day. Uh, come excited, come as much as you possibly can this is a huge turning point in your life. Everything's going to go fine. And uh, you'll find that uh, it's over before you know it. You know, you come with your support person that's usually a friend or family. If you're spending the night in our uh, overnight suite, um, that support person goes home and comes back the next day. We take care of you with a nurse overnight here. It's a wonderful way to do things. Um, You'll meet the anesthesia provider. They come in and talk to you about any medical issues you may have that uh, you've listed on your sheets that were done at the pre-op visit. And then I or one of the other doctors come in and we do our markings. Uh, the markings are helpful as landmarks and guidelines for us. Um, and uh, after you've met both the anesthesia provider and uh, one of the doctors, we go back to the operating room with the nurses. And in the operating room, we'll make you very comfortable. There's a nice warm, uh, air-filled mattress there to keep you uh, comfortable and uh, an IV gets slipped in and off you go and then off we go and then we do a lot of work while you sleep. So our post-op appointments, that's our, our, the, the times we see you after surgery, they're designed with very specific purposes in mind. All of our surgeries are like that. Facelift, rhinoplasty, breast surgery, doesn't matter. In liposuction, what we're looking for is we want to see you back the first day to make sure that uh, there's nothing untoward in terms of bleeding. There's a certain amount of bruising that we expect. Tissue should feel a certain boggy, soft kind of way. They shouldn't feel hard. Sort of they should feel like the front of your knuckle and not the back of your knuckle. That would be bad and we would deal with that. That's why we see you back the next day. Um, if you're staying in our overnight suite, then we'll come see you. Otherwise, you come back and visit us. Once we see you and give you a little blessing, then we send you off. Uh, to your home where you'll be hanging out for a week or so. Depending on the extent of the liposuction, that can be anywhere from you know a few days to a week, something like that. Most people will take a week off given the amount of liposuction we tend to do on them. Uh, it's not like you're in a lot of pain. Pain on a scale of one to 10 is usually a two and very manageable with anti-inflammatories, which is a huge part of our liposuction protocol. At that point, we'll let you go to the three month mark, which is kind of when we take a really kind of hard look and say, well, how did we do? At that point, it's possible to reoperate if we really needed to, uh, to do an enhancement or just fuss a little bit here or there. Uh, there's still healing that's going to happen, but it's healed to the point where we can do that. And at that point, um, we take pictures, compare the pre to the post-op, 
hopefully it's a big whoa kind of moment and uh, you want to show all your friends. Go ahead and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and feel free to share with a friend. You can stay up to date with the latest in cosmetic surgery by subscribing to the Austin Weston YouTube channel. And for more information on the Austin Weston Center, visit our website at austin-weston.com or click the link in the description below.